So Bishop Liu has set out these five foundations for the diocese that are important to him. And, and through that and the Growing Disciples process, this video about Fulton Sheen is the last one to come out, which I think is, is really beautiful because I think that Fulton Sheen is kind of a capstone of the other five foundations. Do you agree? So, so I think, I mean, one of them is evangelization. And if you were going to look for an example of someone who is an evangelist and did everything he possibly could to spread the word of God, Fulton Sheen's your guy. So, I mean, even just the fact his 66 books, which are all about Christ, all about the church, all spread throughout the world in various, you know, languages and, and, and just they're being republished still today, even though some of them were published, you know, almost 100 years ago. So, I mean, what, what else do you have to say about evangelization and how Fulton Sheen was a wonderful example of that? The, I know you brought some of the books that are here. I, just, I know some of the favorites. Um, the, the Life of Christ uh, was something that even John Paul II and I know Mother Teresa uh, both, both appreciated. Uh, this book was known to them and it, the priest is not his own and especially his autobiography, The uh, Treasure in Clay. So, But beyond even the book, so he did write a lot, but we know that he also spoke. And so we have his work uh, is, uh, on the Catholic Hour on radio. Um, and there we can say he brought the, the Catholic faith to Catholics, but then we can move forward from that into Life is Worth Living. And I think there's really some remarkable things to say about his time uh, with Life is Worth Living because he was speaking about the gospel and he was bringing it to a broader audience. So not all of whom would be Catholic, but he had a way of communicating in which I think he drew upon, it was so insightful, um, he drew upon common experience and he was so well read. So he could draw upon moments of history or things he had read about science or sociology or psychology. And he was someone who was, I think, diagnosing our culture in a way that was really necessary and then bringing the light of the gospel to that. Um, so he would have those programs and present them, present that information and do so in a way that captivated audiences and, and made the gospel very non-threatening while at the same time being just a bold witness to the gospel. He, he said hard things, um, but he said them with a real sense of courage. Well, and as a teacher, I look at his example. I know we talked about him being in the classroom at Catholic University, but really what he was doing on television and on his radio shows and in his books was being a teacher. And so he took those, like you said, those bold truths. He brought those and took these huge concepts and was able to explain them in a way that was understandable to the everyday person and even to you know the students in my classroom. So the idea that he was so well, well read, so knowledgeable, so you know he had traveled the world, but was able to take those things and use them almost like a parable, like like Christ did in the Gospels, to make them approachable um, to to every person. He, he was someone who also, when he preached, you could really sense the integrity of what he had to say. Um, some of the preaching that he had at St. Patrick's Cathedral and uh, later at St. Agnes, um, also a devotion called the Treore or the Three Hours. His Good Friday meditations were just stunning. Um, and he could stand up and, uh, and go on and on and just hold an audience captive. Um, I know uh, sometimes when in seminary, we're told about how long we're supposed to preach and they tell us sometimes they say, well, keep a daily homily to two or three minutes, Sunday homily maybe to five to seven minutes. And I will then tell people, I said, now people will tolerate anything for a few minutes. I said, but if you're really good, you can maybe go 10. And if you're extraordinary, you can go 15. But if you're Fulton Sheen, you can go 60. So that's, <laughs> but this is another thing is his use of humor. Um, uh, this is another thing that I think made him uh, so good as a speaker is that he would bring humor, often even self-deprecating humor into his, uh, into his talks. And so um, sometimes he would um, even tell little stories and, and anecdotes, which just really warmed up the audience and, and made himself that much more relatable. Um, like one time he was um, speaking to uh, someone who was, um, had, had met him, but had never, not seen him in person. And then he, this person met him and said, oh, you're Archbishop Sheen. Oh, you look much better on television. And then he told that that anecdote, which is such a, such a funny one. So, I know in, in Treasure and Clay, when you read it, it's uh, Treasure and Clay. I think is the most readable of his books. And so it was, you know, the last thing he wrote. If you want to get to know Fulton Sheen, you can read Treasure and Clay. Um, but in that, he weaves humor into his biography while he's also catechizing. So he tells these stories like that about himself that are kind of self-deprecating, but also kind of tell us about his character as well. My students love in all of his shows he often started the program with a joke, which I think was really warm and engaging and kind of warm, you know, got people ready to listen to the content. So one of their favorite jokes was um, he was telling a story about a, a time when a little boy got in the car with his dad after, after catechism class. And he's like, well, what did you learn today? Which is a question all of my students hear all the time. 
And the little boy told his dad, well, you know, I, I learned about how the Israelites escaped from Egypt. And he's like, oh, okay, tell me, what else did they tell you? And he's like, well, you know, as they were escaping, these, these planes came in and dropped these pontoon bridges and they set them up over the Red Sea. And then the Israelites crossed over on dry land. And the dad's like, okay. And then he says, and he's like, and then what happened next? Well, then after the Israelites were across, some more planes came and they dropped bombs on the pontoon bridges. And then the, you know, the Egyptians drowned. And his dad said, is that what they told you in catechism class? And he's like, no, but if I told you what they really said, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> so, so that like jokes like that, I can play those for my students and they see his warmth, they see his wisdom. And then to be honest, you know, sometimes I have to be like, okay, now do you remember the story of the Israelites and the Egyptians? And you have to kind of, you know, explain it so that they see the point that he was trying to make. So sometimes it was just to capture attention. Sometimes it was actually to teach and instruct, but that humor, I think, is a warm way for people to get to know Fulton Sheen. It really humanized him. Yeah. The, uh, another one of the jokes that he said in this just emphasized his preparation for these, uh, these presentations. Uh, one time he pulled out some notes and he was getting ready to stand up to lecture. And he heard one of the, the people who was uh, in the audience say something like, his, oh, I can't believe this. If he doesn't know what he's saying, then how are we supposed to remember <laughs> what he has to say? So, but it was a sign of actually just how prepared he was because he took all of these seriously. Um, not just working on evangelization, but also wanting to bring content to the faith. 